Hi, this is TC Freeman with WingsOfun.com, and today we have Phil Sharp with the EA Chapter 297 out of Bagral. Tell us what you're doing down here in Duplin County, North Carolina today. Okay, so we're here today to fly some Boy Scouts. Uh, we have an event today that was arranged to allow the Scouts to achieve their merit badge. Uh, and to go flying in a real airplane. So uh, the, the Boy Scouts of America have, have coordinated with the EAA Young Eagles program and we've offered uh, flights throughout the day. Uh, in addition to the flights, we'll talk more about that in a moment, but let me tell you about some of the other things that we had going on. Uh, in addition uh, to the flights, we had four activities that the Scouts could participate in and they were aligned essentially to, to allow them to achieve the merit badge so that the activities were arranged to, uh, to perform certain parts that are required by the Boy Scouts. Uh, so for instance, we had one module that was called Aviation Science and Technology. And by the name, you can imagine it's the, the science, the, the uh, aeronautics, the, the aerodynamics uh, that was covered there. We also covered some power plant uh, propulsion uh, engine te technologies. Uh, we talked about instruments and some of the, the, the way that you use instruments and also how airplanes fly, how you actually control them. The scouts got to participate in, in that part. And then the, another module that was developed focused on aviation in the real world. And your, your very own T.C. Freeman uh, helped, helped perform that, uh, put that together and performed it where they talked about uh, general airspace, uh, some of the regulations, and got to play with a really cool simulator. Uh, so they got to see that 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 there's more to to airplanes than just uh, lift and drag and That's thrust right. and gravity. And we right. a, sadly, we left a lot of balsa wood pieces parts all <laughs> over the airport, but uh, we had a lot of fun. It was uh, taking out the chart and pointing out things and talking about careers and. Uh, actually broke out the old 1919 U.S. air regulations just wow. to kind of show them there was actually a lot of wisdom years ago with old regulations and now we have volumes of uh, volumes of <laughs> regs but anyway so what were the other uh, modules? So the other two we had a third module that was called aircraft as machines and we had this, the beautiful facilities here at DPL, uh, the maintenance facility here that's, that's operated by Reuben Edwards. He uh, let the scouts tour his facility and actually showed them some hands-on activities like uh, what it's like to pull a rivet, for example. And they walked around several different aircraft with the cowlings off and, and actually I, I saw some kids uh, trying to, to uh, hand prop some of these aircraft. Fortunately, the mags were off, but they were out there really trying to uh, <laughs> uh, to fill the compression of the engine. So really some, some good uh, idea that the kids could see as to how the airplanes are actually put together. So then we coupled that uh, the building of, an air, of a real airplane, or at least seeing how a real airplane is built, along with their own building uh, uh, activity. And that was the FPJ-9 glider construction. This is the famous paper plate glider, out of, made out of styrofoam. So the kids got to build a glider, uh, trace out a glider on the styrofoam plate, cut it out, and then uh, test center of gravity uh, by, by having a coin they would place in different locations to see how they could uh, uh, fly the plane uh, in a smooth fashion. So they, they then cut in the control surfaces and made it do loops and twists and turns. It was utter chaos, but really brilliant. They really enjoyed it. So with those four modules, the fifth module we had actually included the flights, the Young Eagle flights, and we had a total of eight pilots uh, flying various aircraft throughout the day, and I can tell you, watching the kids go up in the plane and coming back, every single one of them was grinning ear to ear. It was so, so very cool to see. Yeah, I saw a lot of uh, what we call perma smiles out there today. <laughs> to me, that's where the rubber hits the road, and probably a lot of our uh, listeners are very familiar with Young Eagle flights and that sort of thing. Uh, but I think you took it to the next level, kind of embracing the merit badge aspect. But what, what is the challenges with connecting with youth today, you think? <laughs> Boy, is that an open-ended question yeah. or what? <laughs> um, so I'm a little biased. I have uh, two girls. Uh, age 13 and 11 so connecting with them may be different than connecting with the scouts fortunately the scouts they're in the position and to be very inquisitive and very exploratory and I think that's really personally how I connect to the kids because I'm a very inquisitive person 
I enjoy discovering new things, have pleasure in finding things out. And I think that's a trait that particularly the scouts have and this encouraged in the scouts uh, to explore. So being able to connect uh, with at least my love of, the, of aviation and the technology and the science behind that and have the opportunity to work with the scouts, that enthusiasm really builds. And, and I can tell you there's the joy of flight and there's the joy of being around things that fly. And the scouts got a lot of that today. Well, it's refreshing to see that uh, there still is that interest and, and see those eyes sparkle up and, and whatnot. Um, it's, been, it's been a really fun uh, yet exhausting day, and there's been a lot of folks that have made this possible. Uh, do you want to shed a little light on kind of the, the team we've had? Absolutely. We, we were supported. Our, our chapter, of course, EAA 927. Uh, we had a number of pilots that, that, that came from, from there. Um, we can give the names. Uh, we'll, is that suitable for Sure, them? absolutely. Okay. You got to run down on the names. Yeah, so we had out of EAA 297, we had Drew Holbrook, we had Gary Brown, Ken McGee. Um, we also had a couple of other pilots uh, from the Winterville chapter. That's Bill Hood, who flew an air cam. Now, that was a unique airplane to, for the kids to see and it flying. it was cold. And it was a little chilly. <laughs> that's true. A open cockpit. We also had a very special aircraft. They had a, a, a Mooney um, that was flown by Mr. David Phillips, based here at DPL. We had a Bonanza VTEL based out of Albert Ellis, flown by Jerry Fountain. And last but not least, we had a, no, we had two more actually. The Cathlon, um, flown by Richard Williams out of Kinston. And actually, I, last but not least, I have to mention my safety pallet. That was uh, Mark Thoman out of EA 297 flying Satabria. So those, those are the pilots that we had. We also had some folks that helped out to operate the modules. Of course, uh, you, uh, Tom, helped out with that one module. Sure. We had Jerry Collins and Scott Giroux that were responsible for the aviation science and technology module. They did a great job there. And then uh, our, our dear friends Bob Richards and Eric Stanton who performed the Build to Fly program and building the gliders. Right. Now we had one very special volunteer that I want to, want to highlight sure. in particular. This is Gina Hood. She came in and, and was a lifesaver with the paperwork. She helped us assign the scouts to the planes, okay. get them out there safely and return them safely, and uh, just help coordinate all of the, the tracking of who flew with whom. And um, a very, very good shout out to her. And I think I actually missed Bill Hood and the volunteer pilots. We had, no I did, I mentioned them, I mentioned them. Mentioned, okay, yeah, okay, and then the multitude of scout folks uh, yes. that were, were present and, uh, and whatnot in the airport management and, and all that really made it a good show. I know for me personally, the with, with my kids, they're 17, but they've gone through school and it's just been inundated with, you know, sit down all day in school and then they come home and do homework. And so to me, the challenge is keeping the kids engaged and moving and doing stuff besides, you know, that whole sitting routine. Uh, and there's a lot they can to glean from it, but it is, it is tough to try to develop something. And, and so that's why, you know, we're trying to have them out with the charts today and then get them on a flight simulator and you guys will run them through the hangar and building stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, along those same lines, what, what is it you think that the membership with the chapter gets out of it? Uh, it? What's the motivator? The motivator is sharing the joy of aviation. All of the pilots, everyone that flew today and everyone that helped out today, they're here for a reason because they love this, truly. And it's, it, it's an, an outlet, it's, an, it's, a, it's a way for them to, uh, to be engaged and, and to really sh help the next generation, show the next generation that this is something they can do. And to be able to connect with the youth and and show them that uh, there's this entire world out there uh, of many things to do, aviation being one. And I choose to share this with you. I can share this with you because I love it. And I think that our volunteers really do enjoy that aspect of it. They enjoy engaging with the ch with the children, and and basically seeing that perma smile. Yeah, that that draws it out in all of us. So particularly this group here, we're in eastern uh, rural kind of North Carolina. Is there something uh, I, I guess unique about the kids from this area that you might get other other places? So yeah, the the kids we flew today are from um, the the area in eastern North Carolina, southeastern North Carolina, that. Um, 
that is more rural, uh, kind of agriculture based, maybe not quite as much uh, access to, to this kind of technology and to see airplanes up close. So being able to, to have an event here in the rural area and having the volunteers come in and, uh, to this facility to fly and making it kind of convenient for everyone, it provides that opportunity that, that uh, they may not ha have until they get much older. So it really helps them, um, uh, I think, see that there's, there's so much potential out, in, out there when they, when they grow up and importantly they have to stay, stay smart, be, make good decisions, uh, stay focused on school and, and they can participate in this in the future. So. That's an important point. Yeah, as a kid from humble beginnings, you know, it, it was uh, aviation for me it, it is able to see outside of my own neighborhood, I think was important. It get me around a, just a different set of people. And you really find aviation just draws in a, just such a diverse amount of folks, you know, that fly and yeah. really come to find out it's not, you know, just these rich kind of fat cat perceptions. It's, like everyday yes. folks that are, are really unique and, and whatnot. But, well, did we uh, cover everything uh, uh, that you wanted to discuss here? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, well, very good for doing this. Thank you personally for, for your help here and, and your engagement and uh, okay. for the opportunity to reach out a little more broadly. So, Phil, what's your, uh, what's your background and, and how did you get into all this? Uh, good question. So I, I'm a science geek. I, my physics is my background, and uh, anything having to do with feeling physics is what I like. And airplanes, obviously, that's that's one way to get it, this visceral. You're going to feel it, and um, uh, it, it's something I've I have discovered later in life, I guess you could say. I've never been around airplanes before f until about uh, ten years ago. Um, I started hanging out with pilots and caught the bug, quite literally. So. Are you building something? Uh, I'm about to, very close. Okay. Uh, I've I finished, the, pretty much decided on the, done the research and decided. Um, I'm looking at a RANS S19. Don't have one in our chapter that's been built yet, so I'll be the first to fly or to build the RANS low wing. Cool. Uh, right now we have several RVs, uh, different different vari flavors of RVs in our chapter, but uh, uh, right now looking at the RANS, and, and I'll admit, uh, I've, I've sat in the RVs, and I'm a tall guy, so a little bit of headroom challenge there. The Rands, right. the, the guy Randy Schlitter who designed the Rands is about my height. Uh, it's going to fit well. But I'm looking to start uh, probably January, February time frame. Awesome. Well, I think it's huge to have folks like yourself. I mean, I kind of grew up uh, around it and it's uh, sometimes hard to know if I'm relating appropriately. So to have a team of folks that are, are newer to it and then folks have been doing it a long time, that mixture is, is just a great thing. And we just had a great time here. It was excellent time. All right. Well, we sure appreciate it. And we'll look forward to seeing you all next week here on wingsoffun.com. I'm T.C. Freeman.